At this point, I'd uh, like to welcome David Bayard. David's from Tasmania, and he has an int intimate knowledge of the industry. He has owned cattle properties and butcher shops in Tasmania. Now, that's not much different to here. It's just a little channel of water, and they, uh, they're all much the same, those fellas down there. Uh, he's involved in MLA and the Cattle Council and previous chairman of the Meat Council of Tasmania. David, I'd like you to address the meeting. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay, I'm a bit surprised with all the 10 gallon hats. I'm a bit overawed by it all. But it's rather strange coming here amongst all these people with 10 gallon hats. They're all a bit different. But I'm from Tasmania, of course. And when somebody came to pick me up from the airport, they said, Well, we went to the international airport. We went to the international one. Don't you come to the national? We're so far away in Tasmania. It was a little bit strange. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about, before we start, just about myself. When we started out playing as farms, we didn't know anything about farms. So the wife and I bought. 500 acres, we bought 100 head of cattle, and we thought we'll go out and do it. This will be easy. So out we trotted, and we bought ourselves a, a little old place, and one night there was a big bang, and I thought, what's that? Because we're used to street lights outside and being able to see things. Well, it's a transformer going up, and the dog was screaming. So I said, well, Christine said, you better go and get the dog. So I rushed out, and of course I had my pyjamas on, the pyjamas last year gone, so I went out and fetched the dog off the chain. And I went straight to the dairy. I didn't bother going back into the house and I heard this hollowing and screaming. And Christine could see my pyjama pants. They were light on the ground. And that was the first part of my experience into farming. So things to think about. Is there a snap there? Things to think about. The paddock of late, who gets the lion's share? Well, we all know that. The supermarkets, the retailers are getting it. Who looks after the producer? Well, I'm not quite sure. The MLA is supposed to, Cattle Council. The MLA, we pay a $5 levy for the MLA. But the MLA says they're not a political organisation. They're an organisation that actually works in marketing and, and R&D. But they, they we pay a $5 levy, but I'm a bit confused as to where they start and where they stop. I don't think they are, but that's it. Who looks after the consumer? Well, we've got the ACCC. That fellow Samuel, I don't know who he is. He said, I should take a, a Bex and have a lie down if I don't believe the supermarkets are only earning 3%. Is the government policy based on facts or fiction? We've got a senator, and I call him the seagull. He flies in, flops everywhere, makes a mess, and flies away again. Do we, as far as want to be part of the solution or part of the problem? Well, I think we really got to that's the issue for today's talk. The main issues for today's presentation, what is facts or fiction? Is the government reports, the government, re the government reports things the red meat institute by the ACCC, they're fictitious, they're rubbish. ACCC findings, true or false? They're completely false. Supermarkets claim true or false, they're false too, but we swallow them all. And we've had the seagull talking earlier, and we've had people saying different things, and I think, well, goodness me, where are we going? Tasmania is a case study, a short-term solution. C chronological history, we've had two inquiries into the med Ministry, one in 2006. Peter McGoran at the time said we've got the worst drought in history of Australia, or one of the worst droughts. He said, why are the supermarkets getting top dollar for their beef? Why hasn't it come down the supermarket shelves? And everybody said, well, why find out? We'll go to the ACCC, we'll ask Mr Samuels. Well, and the Gone report came out, and they said, OK, you've got to bear in mind that we only get, there's only a small proportion the producers get out of it. So we, we've got to be very careful when going through all these things. So they came through with all the things which I'll go through in a minute. So you've got to great care when comparing prices. The ACCC knows there's nobody big enough to influence the Saudi yard prices. And this is part of their, their thing. I don't believe it. ACCC reports are factual. They're complete rubbish. Is there an equity in, in, in these prices? We've got a price, we've got a lovely Angus beast here, a British bred beast, not one of these Brahma things we have up here, but we've got a wonderful crowd to trade of a beast. I have to give one all, thank you. Um, so we've got the farm guide prices, uh, the, they've gone the same. They're the same as they were in 2000, as 2010, Abair tells us. I'm not quite sure. I think we've actually gone backwards. And I think somebody referred earlier that we might have gone backwards. Now, the price of the consumer has gone up by over 30% in the 10 years hence. So what's actually happened to it? What's happened to, our, what's happened to the MLA? What's happened to the ACCC? Where is those people looking after us? What will happen to the cattle council? Now, the next one, a long and complex supply chain. And this went in the ACCC that, that Mr Samuels and Mr... His name... I omit me, but we got all these things out. So we went to them. We, we went to the ACCC, a colleague and I went and we said, this is not right. And they said, well, got to the end of it and they got quite exasperated, my colleague, and they said to her, 
what's actually happening? What, what would you suggest happen to the industry? What's your answer? And she said, well, I haven't got an answer, but neither have you. So, with, but anyway, a long and complex supply chain in this, and it's in the McGowan report. I'll read it out. The purchase of live animals, finished the specification, transportation to the abattoirs. Have you ever heard of a, pro, a supermarket actually paying for anybody to go transport to the abattoirs? They're only interested when the carcass is hanging there and they can judge the teeth, the fat cover, or whatever else they can knock you about on, or whatever they can pinch off you. Slaughter and boning. Well, that's a cost. And transportation to the processing plants for preparation. Well, usually they have a sliding rail that slides you through into the next room and prepare it there. And I think J.O. would know that one. The case-ready meat for distribution, aging and storage. And then we've got transport to the stores, in-store butchering preparation. We've already had a case-ready meat. So why would you have in-store butchery? I don't know. It's a cost. Refrigeration preparation, ref refrigeration display, sales to consumer. Now, I've got all these things going through. This is a convoluted, complex supply chain. The MLA tell us it'll cost six to eight million dollars to sort this out. I think the university, and the university in Tasmania, although it might be a bit slow down there, we're on to it, so we'll find out before long. Now, what I've actually done now is I've got a 200 kilogram beast at the supermarket. Now, it cost them $3.80, rather complicated chain this, and it's $760 that it cost them. Off the meat off that beast, 200 kilogram beast, 70% yield, it'll bring back $140. And if I multiply that by, say, 16 ducks a kilogram, I'll come to 2,300. Some people will tell me I'm wrong, it's more than that, but I like to be on the conservative side because I'm going to get it shot down in flames. So we say it's 2,300 for that 200 kilogram beast. So what Coles and Woolworths, what Coles actually went to the ACCC and told them, and the ACCC swallowed it. Remember poor old Dick Pratt, how they chased him? But the supermarket seemed to be able to lie with, in, with integrity. They love it. What Coles tell the ACCC? 14%. 53% of the carcass, of the, the retail price goes back to the producer. Do you believe that? We've already been told 27, 28%, whatever it is. Tw uh, every $1,219 coals pay for a carcass, a 200 kilogram carcass. Ever seen them pay that? It's 53%. They're 14% to get it killed. That's $322 to get the blessed thing killed. 30% um, to actually get it ready for retail meat, package it up and get it out so it gets it on the supermarket shelf and put a price and everything on, a bit of cellophane wrap or a map packet or whatever you like but that's $690. I'm sure JR and his crowd would be very happy if they got $690 for doing it. So that gives them $2,231 for our 3% profit or $69 profit. That's all they make out of that beast. Now, if you believe that, you believe the pigs might fly and I can't see any flying past there. The carcass. So we work on a small butcher now. We'll say a small butcher. Now, a small butcher, $760. He's paid $3.80. Has anybody around here got $3.80 lakhs for cattle? I can't see anybody putting their hand up very quickly. The kill and bone. To kill it costs $60. It costs $90 to bone it. So against that, there's 150, they're, uh, they're 50% of the price there. The HLC can't even get this for themselves. If they go to any processor in the country, they'd find it very quickly. To, as, to, actually, uh, to actually slice and package to get to a retail price, get out on the retail shelf, it would cost them, if they map packed it, it would probably cost them a shade over $140. If they actually put a cellophane wrap like Coles and Woolworths do in our, our part of the world, I think it would probably cost them about 32 cents a kilogram or $45. So whatever it is, we've worked out the total cost is, is $1,050. So that's, they're actually making a $1,350 profit to small retailer. And they've actually, Coles actually said it's a 3% margin. You imagine a butcher turning over $20,000 a week and he's only making $600. His employers earn that, more than that. Now, what I've done actually here is I put the yield up. How you work the yield out? And it's very simple. Anybody can do it. You've got an Osmeets carcass here, Osmeets beef yield, and you actually say, well, 6.2 is topside, and we'll multiply that by the price of topside, the rump, etc. So it's a very simple guide to work through and find out whether, whether that's it. Now, the claims by the ACCC, because livestock prices are a small proportion of total cost of the final product, we've got to be very careful. ACCC thinks that livestock seems to think that livestock prices are very competitive. I don't think they are, and they're getting less competitive all the time. And I actually spoke to the ACCC, they actually run me, and I gave a talk like this, and the ACCC run me an hour later and said, oh my God, they're onto me. And they actually came and asked about Rockdale Meats, and I reckon that's a travesty if they let that, let that go for good. Two large supermarkets are not, enough to, are, not, are not big enough to actually influence prices in Tasmania, in, in, in Australia. Now, I've done a case study here of Tasmania. 
So 500,000 people, we've got a huge population, as I said, 10 gallon hats. 70% um, shelf at wolves and coals. There's 350,000 people eating probably about 36 kilograms. I think we probably eat more meat than you eat up here because we're big, we're big beef eaters. So you're probably eating 32, we probably eat 36. But anyway, if we work on 36 to, to supply the market 350,000 people in Tasmania with meat, we would need to kill 57,000 carcasses per year. Now we know that Coles and Woolworths in Tasmania are killing five to 6,000 cattle. Coles don't kill any, they buy it all off squid. 30 years, a year, 30 years ago, Tasmania had 500 odd butcher shops, now we have less than 80. So the competition's gone out of it. So these people rule, and they rule with an iron fist. They're probably we're exporting 70% of some of the best beef in the world. We don't have the sort of cattle you have here. We have good cattle, but I won't tell you that. But anyway, so we, 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 have, we have two exports work. We have very little competition. We're exporting 70% of what we produce, and we're probably import, importing 80 or 90% of the meat we eat. And I won't tell you about the meat we eat. Coles, and, coals, and, coals don't buy any live cattle in Tasmania. Claims by the major supermarkets, the ACCC, the price of grain nearly doubled in 2006. It pushed, pushed supermarket prices up. When anybody with a feedlot, and I'm sure there's people here that understand what I'm talking about, when the, price of, when the actual price of grain went up, the supermarkets went to their producers and said, hey, listen, Doc, you're doing rather well out of us. We're, we're, we're actually keeping it at the same price because we know the livestock prices in your feedlot are down, coming into your feedlot are down, so we're not going to pay you any more. Nobody has, ha nobody has any idea how much the supermarket buys from the processor. So the ACCC to go to great lengths to tell us about the quality of the cattle. Anybody who's produced cattle for Woolworths will be able to actually tell you how, how cute they are with the, their, their bits and pieces they lay down, the rules they lay down, the specifications, everything else, and it's got to be really good before they'll take it. So they say they only take British bred cattle, or perhaps they do. I've seen a lot of cattle around here that might not, not be British bred. Top quality product coming from grain fed cattle. So what do they do when they go to the processing plant like Swift and they say, we want 40 tonne of rump this week. What do they say? They sharpen their pencils, but they don't tell you where those cattle come from. Are they grain fed? Have they been bought from sale yards? Do they access them? Do, do, do they, Coles and Wars actually know? But according to Mr. Mr. Fells or Mr. Samuels, they know it all. Um, Coles tell ACCC 60% of the carcass is meat. Osmeat say it's 70%, so they can't even get that straight. Elementary, dear Watson. Coles pay $4.60 for carcass feed. $4.60 for carcass feed. Has anybody got $4.60 lately for carcass feed around here? I'd like to see if you have, because I'd like the same thing. Do we as farmers want to be part of the problem or part of the solution? It's all right to stand here and have a good talk fest and go home and say that was funny, but it's not fun. This is serious business. Our business is going out the back, with, out the back door quickly. Do we need to have an independent study in the red meat industry? Of course we do. Supply chain that goes from the gate to the plate. As I said, the MLA tell us it will cost between six and eight million dollars. I'm saying it'll cost six hundred dollars and we can do it very, very simply and we are. This process will have a steering committee or, approve it, or peer reference group that will ha will have farmers on the reference group to ground truth all claims. And we'll invite Mr Samuels along and when he gets the truth, he might like to have a Bex and lay down too. Thank you for your time.